Hello and thanks for joining us on City Talk. I'm Maria Soreo filling in for Liz Brown Swanson. And as we do every month, we invite our mayor, Susan Brooks, in studio to talk about everything happening in our city. Susan, welcome. Pleasure to be here. You know, it's always so busy for all of you on the council. Yes. And there's so much going on that it's great that we get to kind of invite all of the viewers um, into the show here just to just to get caught just up to on do things. recap. Exactly. I know, I know one of the... Constant. Yeah, well, it is. Of course it is. One of the big topics has been the Civic Center. Um, I know there was an open house, and over 90 residents came out, which is amazing. It was really awesome. Now, uh, our citizenry is very involved, as you know. Yes, and very. For the city's 45 years old this year. Yes. And next week we have our celebration. Our big, yes. Uh, acknowledging the incorporation from 1973. And ever since then, there's always been a quest for a real city hall. Of course. Because we've been operating out of a World War II Nike site, hmm. which is kind of romantic in a way, but not so great when you're trying to get work done. Exactly. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, these people came, uh, many studies have been done, uh, it's questionnaires, uh, high propensity of respondents hmm. in the community have wanted a city hall or a brand new city hall. Right. Trying to find out what the priorities would be has been ongoing. We have a civic center advisory committee that meets monthly. And these are very involved um, citizens, residents of our community, many longtime residents. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was an opportunity with the Civic Center Advisory Committee, the staff, and Gensler, right. which is this world renowned architectural, uh, architectural firm. Mm -hmm. firm that we brought up last month. We discussed some of the amazing things that they do. They're doing this work pro bono for us to help to get an outline. Uh, outline of what it is that um, really that the community wants and to keep us moving forward. This is something that we really need to do in this community is move forward. And, and sometimes what things get stalled. And, right. Um, for, I can look back 25 years ago and see projects such as this that were stalled, that went nowhere. And, and what and, a tremendous opportunity too for the community to have some input into a new city hall. It's constant, and it, I really have to give so much credit to our citizenry uh, for their involvement, but also to the council and to the staff yes. for following through very with true. the council's wishes. This council really wants involvement, but we are very proactive hmm. uh, when it comes to you know, some of the items that we know we have to take care of. I know there's going to be a lot of other meetings and things so that yes, will there'll be uh, a lot more meetings right. and a lot more involvement. So people should stay tuned and and get involved. Uh, it's, uh, there is a website. There is a web page on our website okay. for involvement in the Civic Center Advisory Committee and Great. the Civic Center. Um, so, so people can constantly be involved. Check in and yeah. yeah, come out to the meetings and get more involved, absolutely. Now speaking of inviting people out, of course the big anniversary oh, next yeah. week. Yeah. And uh, we're inviting everybody to come out to House Park on Sunday, September the 9th. And it's going to be from noon to 4 and that's going to be so much fun. It will. It will be a great community outreach program for us and our residents. Also. People on the peninsula who live on the peninsula, everybody mm -hmm. is welcome. You don't have to show an ID card for RPV, but we, we will have um, games. Uh, there will be food and drinks, mm -hmm. and we will have a beer and wine garden, of course. Of course. And uh, a lot of activities that I believe it will be a wonderful family fun day and a really great way to say goodbye to the summer. Hopefully goodbye to the summer because yes. we just don't want any more heat. Yes, 80 would be good. 75, 80 would be perfect. Yes, yes, 75 would be better. That would be better. <laughs> you know, something about this city that I find so unique is you really welcome the residents and, and you sort of reward them by having get-togethers like this because you really want them to be a part of it. We do, and you know, that's a really great point because we had an expo uh, back in more April or hmm. May uh, where we invited all the businesses and the community came out. People I've never seen at council meetings came to that and they enjoyed it. And this is another opportunity for just families to come and enjoy, celebrate the fact that we have this beautiful paradise, this beautiful right. gem on the Palos Verdes Peninsula that we can call ours. 
I mean, 19 parks in all. We have the majority of parks for the whole peninsula, which we actually acquired when we became a city mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. But we have the preserve, you know, nobody else has that. And we have so many spectacular, with Terranea, right. you know, that made us a destination city. We have Trump National Golf Course, another outstanding monument to a beautiful city. That's right, and even Lower Hess Park, we were there for the oh ribbon my gosh. cutting. Yeah, that's so special. beautiful. That, that was is lovely. Really special, and um, less is more. Yes, less is more. And, <laughs> and really, as moving forward, we really do maintain that mantra because we want to keep our community, to the extent that we can, our little piece of paradise. Which you do very well. Now, I know one of the. Well, I don't know. Well, you, <laughs> to some extent. you work on it all the time, Susan. Um, well, we fight to keep it that way. But you, you do, and I think it's, it's, a challenge. A, it's yes, it's a big challenge. Another big challenge, really, in this area is the Portuguese Ben landslide feasibility study. And I think that ever since I found Rancho Palos Verdes on the map, we've been talking about this Portuguese Ben area, and a lot of people don't understand that. Some people will say to me, "Why don't they just fix it?" And it's it's yeah, not they just don't real, yes. they don't realize what it takes and that that land is constantly moving. So so much goes into this project. Tell us where we are with it. It does. I mean, in 1957, when you think about the, I don't know who whose mind this was, but in, they wanted to blast through Crenshaw Boulevard to create a path to the ocean mm -hmm. so that they would have a road that goes all the way to the ocean. And Hawthorne wasn't enough. Right. And so uh, that, of course, triggered this ancient landslide that broke off into three sections, Portuguese Bend, Abalone Cove, Flying Triangle. But the Portuguese Bend landslide is the one that really affects the road. Right. And we, that is an arterial road with uh, raised sewer lines. So finally, um, we did as a council, and Councilman Dida is really to be credited with uh, spearheading this. He's always wanted... He's always made this a priority. And He's very he passionate is, about it. Yes, and mm -hmm. he is a father of the city. He's one of the founders. Um, he, together with Mayor Portem de Hovic, were worked with this subcommittee mm -hmm. and uh, the cons consultants and many, many meetings with the public over for over a year yeah. uh, to come to an understanding about what this is and how we're going to address this massive amount of land that is moving right. and what we can do. Of course, maintaining the road is always one of the priorities because that's an access it's point. A major that artery everybody for everybody needs. coming and going. Right. So uh, we got to the point where um, there was a feasibility study. The questions were answered by Stevens um, Associates and J.B.D.B. Stevens. I always want to say J.C. Stevens. <laughs> Um, they held numerous meetings, and uh, on June 28th, we actually, there was another meeting. That was the last meeting they had. Okay. And then it came to the council August 7th, hmm. and the council actually made some decisions. I mean, we all agree that we need to move forward. Right. And we need to do something. Hmm. So looking at what it is that can be done, we, uh, the council as a whole, now, I People need to understand that the council works. We are five members. Yes. And so you need to count to three to get um, something passed. Accomplished, right. But when it comes to something as large as this, hmm. you really want, you, you want a unanimous right. you, uh, vote. You want everybody to agree because this is a major decision. It will be a lot of money. Right. And hopefully a good deal of this money is going to be through grants. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that we're making the right decisions. Absolutely. And that we know and feel and believe we all do that we're acting in the best interest of our residents. So um, we did agree to do subsurface re dewatering, storm water control, um, engineered st slope stabilization. It has to be engineered. Uh, you just can't stabilize it by sticking what we did do in the past. Um, no, you need we, experts that know exactly right. what to do in the situation. And I remember you even being down there with some of the workers a couple oh, of years ago it, with the well, hard actually, hat on. That was that was actually that was also land movement, but that was yeah. the San Ramon. Um, right. That was the storm drain that we put in there. But yes, there was there was land movement in that area as yes. well. 
<laughs> that was fun. It was. But also eliminating the septic. Nobody wants to think about it, but these right. septic tanks are in Rolling Hills and some are in, in Portuguese Bend as well. Mm -hmm. And removing that fluid and that effluent is really, really going to, uh, we'll be able to hope to slow this um, this movement. Right. So John Cruikshank, fellow member, council member, mm -hmm. John Cruikshank and I are the new subcommittee that will be working with the city of Rolling Hills and and together with the staff and city attorney to see what we can do to move forward on getting Rolling Hills to have septic tanks, um, not to have septic tanks. Such a huge but to undertaking. Have sewers. <laughs> right. I mean, one of the largest per capita income communities in the United States still does not have sewers. That's amazing. I know, it is. It's hard to but, believe. But it is a beautiful pastoral area. They are our neighbors. We love our, our neighboring cities, and we want to work together with them. You know, speaking of working together, Susan, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about the fact that you as a council, all five of you, work so hard on so many issues every week. Every, when you meet for these council meetings, you may not always agree on everything, but you work even outside to, to, to make sure that these things come together. And I don't think everybody realizes how hard you work. Um, well, thank you. Uh, and I, I really have to credit that this council, um, I have to say this council in particular works very hard together and independently. Mm -hmm. When we come together, we come together with sometimes different opinions, right. but we are able to work together toward this. I think one of the challenges I've seen um, happening of late is that because we, we often go back to the drawing board on an item, whether it's Del Cerro Park or La Dera Linda or um, the, the landslide, mm -hmm. we see that we, we take information in from our residents. Right. And what happens in these, um, in these situations is we as a council have to make decisions. And sometimes we meet with small subsets of these communities. Right. And, but what, where we are right now is that I hope that people will understand that it is the council's job to act as a body of five and to take the feedback that we get um, from others, whether they're individuals and small groups, and apply it to the needs of the whole. Right. The needs of the whole, meaning the needs of the 43, nearly 43,000 residents of the city, while taking into account every locale and every situation um, every geographic location that we may be in, because obviously those residents uh, are always affected, um, and we always want to include their it, their feedback and mm -hmm. acknowledge their special situations. But I do think that a lot of this, what I'm almost wondering if it's like a micromanagement, um, a lot of this is I think it's fairly recent. Um, I haven't seen this in the last seven years and then back 25 years ago when I was on the council, not to this extent. And I really think it's because we are all feeling like we are losing our rights in the state. Mm, very true. The state is day in and day out. We They are taking more away from us and telling us that we have to put now uh, high density transit housing near transit districts that they choose, not necessarily that may be zoned properly. Right, and they're not here, as you are, to know all of these things. No, they don't know, and that accessory dwelling units, you know, uh, may, are not necessarily zoned in these areas. And, and so with all of the challenges that we see mm -hmm. as a city and our astute residency, I think, I think we're all just taking deep, deep breath and we don't want anything else taken. And right. so that's why this happens, but I would ask our residents to to have faith that we as council are really looking at as a whole on their best behalf and and really to acknowledge that because we can't keep going back and forth on particular items that we already have gone back and forth on to the point where they get stopped and nothing happens. Right. And nothing happening in the preserve would be a big deal if we don't address the problems there. Absolutely. It's a huge issue. And with five people, yeah. Nothing have... happening in the landslide is a big problem. Oh, you know? yeah, that has to work right. out eventually for sure. And with five people on the council, 
you're not always going to agree and it's good to have different opinions as well. It's excellent to have different yeah. opinions because people will represent sometimes other constituents points of view. Right. It's 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 the need in these large projects in particular for us to really work together and come to some kind of unified decision and and I really do give our council a lot of credit for that. Yes. I, I really respect and admire all my fellow council members. Well, you all work very hard, that's for sure. All right, Susan, we're going to take a break, and we come back more with our mayor, Susan Brooks. You're watching City Talk. Hi, I'm Corey Linder. I'm the director of the Recreation and Parks Department with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and I'm here to remind all of our residents to make their day at the beach a safe one. There have been hundreds of rescues this year, so avoid being a statistic. Make sure you choose an area with a lifeguard on duty, Avoid beaches where the current is too strong. Never swim alone, and if you're in an emergency, call 911. For more information on area beaches, go to our website at rpvca.gov. We want all of our residents to enjoy our beaches and to stay safe. We are back talking to our Mayor Susan Brooks. Susan, it's so important for this city to keep our residents safe. You're always coming up with new ways to do that. And one of them are these vacation cameras that the residents can actually borrow from the city. Tell us a little bit more about those. Yes, it's um, another wonderful avenue that the staff came up with. We mm -hmm. have this public safety officer, information officer, uh, Jackie Ruiz. She's great. She does a fantastic job. She so really does. It's the latest offering from the city by Ring. Um, as we know, we, we did receive great discounts on Ring the doorbells. doorbells. Mm -hmm. These are cameras that can be, um, they're, they're um, temporary. Right. And you can plant them outside if you go on vacation or if you uh, are going to have your house fumigated, as was the case recently where exactly. some people were robbed and uh, right. they didn't have those. And so we're offering this for an on loan for 30 days so for up to three times a year. I really think it's a lot more advantageous for everybody if you can to just get the ring system. It is. But for the city to offer this it's is amazing. I mean, what's next? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, we'll just give everybody their own cop outside <laughs> their door. <laughs> well, it gives people peace of mind, I think, too, to be able to go away and say, okay, I'm covered. You know, there's somebody watching, even. It is great. No, yeah. it's, I. I I think that we have done more than any community that I've ever heard of right. as far as offering residents the opportunity to be safe, to stay safe and to feel safe and to know that we're protecting them and we're doing the best we can. Very true. But the best thing is going to be in their hands. That's very true and everybody has to be proactive. Neighborhood watch, lock your doors. Yes, and think about all of those things. We, we try to do the PSAs and just to remind people about safety and keeping your home safe and all that. So right. you're all doing a great job for sure. Now, another thing that really is kind of new is this home, uh, the homeless outreach portal that the city is talking about now, which I think is amazing because it's really an opportunity mm -hmm. for the residents to help out and somehow connect the homeless to people that, that have the ability to help them out. It is. I mean, it is an epidemic. It is. We can't deny. We can't e deny opioid abuse as an e epidemic, and 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 obviously nationally and statewide and locally, we're dealing with that. It's a huge problem. But this homeless situation is such an epidemic, and yes, we do care. We are participating. I'm going to give a shout out to Supervisor Janice Hahn. Yes. Um, she really did spearhead a good deal of this for the county. And we are seeing great differences. If you do see a homeless person who appears to need help, you now have a portal on your phone, phone. or mm -hmm. actually just on your computer that you can go to where you can access to how to get help right. and to send somebody to offer assistance, offer shelter, food. There are many uh, organizations, nonprofits out there that are now working out of this bill that was passed, Measure H, mm -hmm. for the homeless. Right. Uh, so there's money out there to get these people the help they need. And uh, so we need to all take little responsibility Absolutely. there and do that. Absolutely, and help out. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of concerns uh, raised by the local residents regarding the preserve access and the parking. We will kind of want to get into that because I know it's something that, that the residents use. And you know, tell us a bit more about that. 
So we had over 13,000 visitors in the month of June. Yes. To the preserve. Right. And so they and between the upper and the lower um, trailheads. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people, yes. It's a lot more people than, and, and it increases mm -hmm. constantly. Well, it's because of the beautiful land that we have here. Everybody wants to experience that. No, they do. And you know? I mean, it's understandable. But what we really need to do is we really need to be mindful of the residents here who help form that preserve. That's right. And many of them live right there. Mm -hmm. They're right in the path of the trailheads and the access routes. So there are parking issues. There have been litter. There are been tailgate parties, literally. Some really awful things had gone on. Now, the council has been proactive. We right. did Red Stripe, part of uh, Crenshaw Boulevard, up at the top where Del Cerro is. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at doing some um, permit parking only oh, down in Forestall area on some of those um, roads there along Heroic and Pirate. Of course, the community has to uh, sign on to them that they would be willing to do that, but mm -hmm. that does help. Red striping part of Forestall, um, some permit only um, preserve parking, uh, perhaps inside a small gated area in Ladera Linda. Okay. But I, I think there will be, I'm really hoping, I, there may be some promise on the horizon about some new avenues. But as far as right now, um, we have Rancho Palos Verde City Hall, and it is a great access. But right now, that does provide access to the preserve. Right. Now, it's not a trailhead, so to speak, but we could move in that direction to make a trailhead there because there is not, there is not um, personal, there's not, there are not homes there. There's, there's no individual um, business or activity going on there mm -hmm. um, that is really going to be impacted by using that as a trailhead. So as far as right now goes, we are coming back with more to look at more options, okay. but it is constantly an issue and we have gone back and forth several times yes. on some of these parking issues. So paid parking, metered parking, uh, in particularly up in the Del Cerro area where right. you have meter pay stations, mm -hmm. not yeah. like every car is a meter, Right. but if people pay to get into parks as they do everywhere else mm -hmm. um i think it's just and it's fair and yes it, you, you you put it at a price at a time limit so that other people have an opportunity to share that too very true now on a related issue can you tell us about the upcoming ayso soccer games that will impact the traffic at ladera linda and uh my understanding is the games start april the 8th is that right april oh so September the 8th. It's okay. September 8th. <laughs> September the 8th. That was my dad's birthday. Aww. Yeah, September 8th. And the games will start and they'll go through till May. Okay. And uh, this area down at Forestall Drive, yeah. um, you know, there are soccer fields up there. They've been there forever. Yep. And uh, it's very popular. A lot of, it's very popular. It gets mm -hmm. to be very crowded on the weekends. Right. So we've heard a lot of complaints from the residents, and we've tried to work um, with AYSO on this. But right now, it looks like the city is going to be offering and providing uh, flaggers that are going to be there during the weekend hours, during soccer hours. That's good. Um, to make sure that traffic moves smoothly, because it is a challenge over there on Bells for his drive south, getting on from far It's difficult. And, and, and getting with, off from the Trump side as well. Yeah, and with children, you want to make sure that everybody is safe, especially because they're kind of running in and out, and it's a lot going on. There is a lot going out, so you're right. Actually, in the children coming and going, you just, yes. it's, it's constant. So we're going to be offering that, and that'll be good. But we're also looking at um, changes to the road uh, over there mm. at Forestall. There's coming up at, a re at the next council meeting, we'll be looking at some of um, the opportunities that we may have to mitigate traffic problems right over there. Forestall, PV Drive South, and Trump, access to Trump. It's always a busy and topic. Schooner, yeah. Yes, very much so. Now, an interesting conversation at the city council meeting about the antenna farm that yeah. I want to touch upon because it's very rare that we see a house that has that many antennas on it. And you, the, as a council, were very swift in your decision that night. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, that was that was really unbelievable. It's very strange. That was it was the most abject form of dismissiveness that um, a private, um, not even a resident, no. a private entity, the person doesn't even live in the city, right? Uh, that they would put a, a group of up to eighteen. Uh, antennas on a home that are for commercial use, no less. And there's so many and, safety yes. you know, problems with that. It's unbelievable. And this started 17 years ago. <sighs> and so there was a modified version of approval for five uh, antennas, if you can even believe that. That and seems like a lot. I think so. And <laughs> it, it really was right in your face for us. It was so obvious that... Um, I mean, to my knowledge, we've never reversed um, a conditional use permit. Yeah. And that this is the first time that this has happened. Well, so, and you feel for the neighbors around there as oh, well that, that have to come home and see that. It's and the just neighbors unbelievable. came to the meeting and we, they did. Uh, you could not help but feel for them. In fact, I think that the attorney who was there, the newest attorney, because yeah. he was <laughs> that plaintiff was um, hiring different attorneys. I think she time. felt for them too. Uh, it appears that she did <laughs> yeah. because she realized that that's in fact is really quite a blight and even the the option that she of course she asked for a delay which has been asked for since 2014. So we've been going since 2014 with delay promise delay promise and it's just like laughing in your face yeah. um, that somebody's saying I don't pay attention to government, you mean nothing to me. I don't pay attention to neighbors or people, or I don't care about them. So I just don't know if this individual has neighbors where he really does live, but I would hope that um, he would see the light, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, another item on the City Council agenda was the underground utilities effort by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So since 2016, we've signed on to, obviously, we all hate overhead utilities. Of they course. They look awful. But they're everywhere. And whenever you get into a community where they don't have them, all of a sudden the air is easier to breathe. I mean, as you drive along Palos Verdes Drive South, coming out of San Pedro, and right after you pass La Rotunda, all of a sudden it's like, wow, it's so beautiful here. Well, one of the reasons it's so beautiful there is because there are no, not only is it beautiful mm -hmm. and you get to see the panorama of the coastline, but there are no overhead utilities there. Right. So um, what's happened is we have a very finite amount of money. It's like $600,000 mm -hmm. to address this issue. And uh, with this Rule 20 that we have between the Edison and the government, right. what ends up taking place is it's about $4 million to do a mile of undergrounding. It's so the council prioritized the two areas of La Rotunda to the city limit mm -hmm. um, over toward San Pedro and uh, also up at Crenshaw uh, down near uh, just just uh, north of, of that area in a short couple of blocks. Mm -hmm. And then we also looked at the really the need to prioritize if we we're going to underground the first thing you're going to do, it really should be for public safety. Right. And fire, I know, fire. is a big concern. Yeah. Yes, most of the fires have all started in the canyons. And yes. most of them have all been from electrical wires, shorts, a bird, a hawk, um, you know. Yeah. Somebody working on equipment who is actually an Edison worker, which was the case before. But uh, the real issue is we are, we've asked staff to come back and look in to see what we can do about really ensuring safety because it is a tinderbox over there um, yes. near the preserve and in various areas actually of the city. Another ongoing project canyons. that you're working very hard to, to yeah. get right. Well, the staff is working. Yeah. We're giving all that direction, but we are working hard to give that direction. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It takes a lot of work. It takes get, a lot of work, Susan. To get, all the, to get all that done. Yes, it does. It does. Well, Susan, thank you so much for being with us again this month. Always a pleasure to have you here and uh, update us on everything going on. Oh, thank we you. It's a it. pleasure to be here, and I hope to see people uh, on September 9th. That's right. At, uh, at Hess Park. Hess Park. So we can have that wonderful celebration of this beautiful paradise. That's right. Noon to four. Please come and, and enjoy. I'm Maria Sorrell. Thanks for watching City Talk, and we'll see you next time.